So I knew Daniel Kahneman very well. Uh, I knew him initially as a scholar. I read his papers in Introduction to Psychology course, which I took in 1993. Um, I then, uh, of course, encountered his work when I became more involved in positive psychology. And uh, we met in conferences. Uh, but I also knew him on a, on a personal level. He's uh, a relative of uh, Tommy, my wife. His uh, Tommy's father is his uh, first cousin, or was. They both passed away. And um, he was a very gentle and uh, dear man, very humble. Whether he was at a conference where everyone just wanted a, a, a piece of him, or whether it was in a, in a family gathering. Never made a big deal out of himself, was never at the center of, uh, of, of attention, was always asking questions, was always curious. And this week, you know, he passed away. He did live a full and fulfilling life and, you know, died at the age of 90. And yet um, I'm filled with sadness. You know, I won't... Um, you know, I, I won't see his uh, his smile again. And, um, or at least not in person. Yes, in my mind's eye, I see it right now as I'm speaking with you. And here is a poem that uh, I read this morning and I thought would be um, very relevant for Daniel Kahneman's work. It's called uh, The Bridge Builder. It was written by Will Allen Dromgul. It's a woman. She was born in 1860 and died in 1934. Uh, she had written a number of uh, very popular, at the time, novels and uh, numerous uh, poems. Um, she was a real intellectual and uh, a feminist and uh, influenced many, many people, both uh, uh, academics as well as the general public. And um, she writes in her poem, The Bridge Builder. And I will read it once, and then I will explain it, and then I will read it again. Poetry is not meant to be read once. And I hope that you will read it time and time again after. Because every time you read a, a poem, especially if it's a good poem, you go deeper and um, you make more connections to your own life, to the world. And um, we not only rise in our understanding, we also rise in terms of the well-being, the intellectual, emotional well-being that we derive from it. The Bridge Builder. An old man going a lone highway came at evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide through which was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The sullen stream had no fear for him, but he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength will, with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at evening tide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I've come, he said. There followed after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm that has been as naught to me, to that fair-haired youth may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. So what is this poem about? It's about an old man 
who crosses the water, the tide, uh, rough waters. And he crosses them and he gets to the other side successfully. And then when he gets to the other side, he builds a bridge. And another person, a pilgrim, another man says to him, why are you building this bridge, old man? You're about to die. You're not going to cross this bridge ever again. Why are you doing? Why are you wasting your strength, your time? And the old man says, you know, earlier I met a young man who's coming uh, on this path and uh, he will benefit from this bridge. So I'm building this bridge for him. So as I was reading this poem and rereading it, and, you know, this is, you know, now that I read it to you, maybe it's my 10th reading of it since this morning. I'm thinking about Daniel Kahneman as a bridge builder for various reasons. First of all, he built a bridge between psychology and economics. And you know, today in our culture, there is a, a real disconnect in academia between or among the disciplines. So if you do economics, you're, you know, you talk to economists. If you do psychology, you talk to psychologists. Not only this, if you do positive psychology, you talk to positive psychologists. If you, if you do cognitive psychology, you only talk to cognitive psychologists. Whereas for Daniel Kahneman, that wasn't the case. He was curious about psychology and cognitive psychology, which he dealt with, and positive psychology, where he did a lot of research. And then he created a new field of behavioral economics that bridged psychology and economics. And he was interested in microeconomics, which is the economics of the individual, and macroeconomics, which is about society and organizations. And he was also very much interested in politics and art. He loved dance. He went to performances. You know, he lived in New York his, the last few years of his life. He went to performances constantly. He was a food connoisseur. He was a real Renaissance man. He read widely. And then he bridged the different disciplines together. If you read his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, you will interact with him and you will realize just how widely read he was. Were he, yes, he presents psychological studies. That was his, you know, claim to fame, his, uh, his profession. And yet he talks about economics a great deal and he talks about life. And his book is accessible to the layperson, so he's creating another bridge between the ivory tower, between academia and Main Street and the general public. So that's another bridge. He was also a very gentle and kind man who strove his entire life to create bridges among people from different cultures, from the different sides of the political spectrum from conflicting sides. He was a man who strove for peace his entire life. And in that he was a bridge builder. He was also interested, very much interested in the thoughts of the ancient thinkers from East and West, from philosophy and literature, and brought them to the modern world to today. So he bridged past and present and he created a bridge to the future. His understanding, the bridges that he built for us who survive him will continue to impact the field of happiness studies of economics of psychology in general. 
So he has laid those bridges that we are walking on today. That we will continue to walk on. Whether we are coaches, he has certainly changed the way coaches think about working with clients because of his work on rationality and emotions. Or therapists, or parents, or business people. A real bridge builder. And what a, an honor it is for us to live in the same world as he. To benefit from his wisdom. And he left us these bridges in the form of research, in the form of books, and many lectures that are online. A humble, kind, and brilliant man. Let me just read The Bridge Builder once more. An old man going a lone highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide through which was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The sullen stream had no fear for him. But he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at evening tide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I've come, he said. There followed after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm that has been as naught to me, to that fair-haired youth may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. <laughs>